Hi, I'm Guillermo Campitelli, and this video is about how confounding and selection bias are represented in causal models. Okay, so let's consider this situation in which we are interested in uh, determining whether the variable x is causally related with variable y. Now, we already know that there is another variable or a composite of variables, a u, that is a common cause of x and y. Now, we, are, we already know that this is, this is um, identified in the causal model. But we don't know whether there is a relationship if x causes y or not. We are going to investigate that. Now, let's say we measure x and we measure y and we measure u in a study. We found an association between, between x and y. Now, this association may be uh, related to u being a, a common cause of x and y not because x and y are causally related or in other words not because x causes y so we may find an association which is not indicating that there is a causal link because we've got this common cause that affects both uh, both variables so u is a confounding of the relationship between x and y um, another word for you is it's a com confounder. Um, okay, so so this is the problem of confounding. What shall we do in order to deal with confounding? Well, what we do is to intervene on X um, by random allocating participants to values of X. And if we know U, control for you. Um, for example, statistically controlling or examining the relationship between x and y at different values of u. Okay, I'm going to explain this with an example. Let's say we um, are interested in investigating whether some measure of motivation uh, increases academic achievement. And there is another variable, intelligence, that it's a, a common cause of both motivation and academic achievement. So we already know motivation, people who are, are uh, sorry, intelligence, people who are more intelligent tend to be more motivated. We already know that people who are more intelligent um, have higher academic achievement. Or we don't know whether motivation has a causal link to academic achievement. Now, we need to control for intelligence. The way we control for intelligence is if we know um, the values of intelligence, so if we measure intelligence, then we, um, we measure the relationship between x and y at different values of u. So we measure the relationship between motivation and academic achievement at different levels of intelligence. And, and the effect, we are going to have different effects at, at different levels of intelligence and we can take an average of those effects um, as the total effect. So that's one way. And the other way is um, assigning doing running an experiment which involves randomly allocating participants to uh, different levels of the variable x so if we can uh, establish different levels of motivation of participants variable x and then we investigate how uh, their academic achievement by randomly allocating participants to different levels of the variable, of variable motivation, 
we are also controlling for uh, for intelligence. So the confounding is um, deal we, we deal with confounding by controlling for the um, confounding variable and uh, and the ideal way of doing that is by randomly allocating participants to different values of the variable motivation but sometimes it's not possible because it's something that we observe not something that we can uh, intervene so if that's not possible so we do a statistical control controlling of the variable intelligence uh, by investigating the relationship between x and y at different levels of the variable intelligence okay so that is confounding there is another aspect another important issue which is the selection bias which is almost the opposite so here we want to investigate whether x and y are causally related but so we don't know but we already know that y is causally, causally related to z and x causes z as well so z is a common effect of x and y okay so selection bias is introduced if we control for z so basically in order to uh, avoid uh, selection bias we should not control by z uh, control for z and i'm going to explain this in an example as well so that's what i said do not control for z so which is the opposite in the in the when we had um the common cause and uh, co which is a con and, and there is confounding then we should control for in the confounding variable but here when when we've got a common effect we should not control okay this is the example let's say we already know that the variable x practice in board games the number of hours people practice in board games increases performance in board games and we also know that working memory capacity also increases performance so people with higher working memory capacity are, are tend to be better at uh, at uh, board games and people who practice board games are also uh, better at, at them now we are interested in something else we are interested in whether in whether practicing in board games improves working memory capacity yeah okay so what we should do there is we run an experiment so we randomly allocate people to to different hours of practice and and see uh, working their working memory capacity and um, or maybe we cannot we don't have the resources or it's technically impossible to do that so the if, if these two are, are we are observing those variables we, we don't have the capability of intervene over this variable what we should not do is to control for Z because if we control for Z we are introducing selection bias think about this let's say that in order we say okay let's control for performance which is the wrong thing to do so instead of um, investigating the relationship between practice and working memory capacity in uh, at all levels of performance in board games so of the whole range we take participants who are in the whole range of performance in board games we decide to select a group of people who perform very high now that will introduce a relationship between x and y which is not causal how is that imagine this we know that part, that the group of participants we are investigating are high in performance in board games 
So let's say we know their values in Y. We know, for example, a person who has um, very low working memory capacity. Well, if that person has very low memory capacity and it has high performance in board games, well, it has to be because it has a, it practiced a lot. And the other way around, if we know that a person practice very little and is high in working memory performance, that gives us information about, about why. It tells us that that person has to have a very large working memory capacity because if, it's, if it is practicing very low, how do we explain their good performance in, 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 in board games? So, if we control for set, we, we introduce a relationship between X and Y that wasn't there if we were not controlling. Um, why? So because it may be the case now that X and Y are negative relate, negatively related. The people who practice more tend to have lower memory capacity and pre people who practice less tend to have larger me memory capacity, working memory capacity. So we established, we, we introduced a relationship between the two variables that wasn't there if we were not controlling. So that we introduced selection bias and the way of dealing with that is not controlling for uh, the common effect.